Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn, I'm with the fantastic Jezrai and we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are meeting and streaming and creating from today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. As I said, my name is Flynn and I'm here with Jezrai, the painting guy, which is how I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, good. Bit tired. How are you doing? I'm, t I'm good. We'll talk about why you're tired in a little bit. Um, your trip trip to Sydney and um, Vivid and all that sort of stuff. You're very on brand with all the paint all over you. That's like actual paint. That's not a um, design of the shirt, I Bal assume. Balenciaga. <laughs> Looking very cool, very on brand. Um, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Adobe Live. It's great to have you hanging out with us. Uh, we're doing a two-part series on how to create a mural. So we're going to be talking a bit about that. We'll check out some of Jesse's work. Um, we'll talk about some of the projects you've been working on and give you some like kind of practical tips as we go through the process. Feel free to ask questions as we're rolling along. If you're watching live, whether you're on YouTube or Behance, it's all good. Um, throw your questions in, throw your comments in. Let us know where you're tuning in from as well. Um, Jess Rice from Melbourne. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. And we're just going to hang out and uh, have a good time, I think. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Oh, I think yeah. we will. Yeah, we will. Um, I've got some of your work behind me. Um, what, I've, I've got like all these different titles for you. One of those people that have had many like different jobs, many different things. Muralist is what I see a lot of your work being out there in the world at the moment. So artist slash muralist, is that what we go for these days? On my LinkedIn, it's I've got art wizard. Art so wizard. <laughs> yeah. We can call me. We can call me art wizard from now on. Art wizard. That doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. rhyme the same as with Jezra. I'll think of a rhyme for that. Um, but also, um, you know, full time rock and roller. I think I saw on your about page. But we'll get. We'll, we'll jump into like getting more descriptive on that stuff too. Um, so yeah, yeah, rock and roller. Rock and roll is good. Um, mm. That's a, that's a good thing, right? If you, you if you're your own boss, you can just make up your title. So like junior vice president. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. Jesse, not the <laughs> last Simpsons reference we'll have in here, um, but yeah, maybe we should check out some of your work. I think you've you've got some stuff loaded up. Um, maybe actually, before we do that, can you tell us? Yeah, what is day in the life of Jesse Wright? Um, yeah, so my day kind of starts one of two ways. One being I'm woken up at uh, six o'clock to start a mural. I'm not that excited about, but nonetheless have to rule through it um and then my slower days i get to wake up without an alarm clock which is not that often but nonetheless um it's up there they're, they're my better days i think yep. um, yeah the no alarm <laughs> days yeah oh man they're, they're, they're few and far between but you know um yeah so my day will start with either me catching up on emails um starts quite heavy i'm just straight into it when i get up out of bed um and then I'll either draw for a little bit to cap like for some murals that I've got coming up or some uh, shirt brands I've got coming up. Um, either that or I will go check in at Honeybone Studios or Gallery, um, see if everything's running smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I'm not doing one of those two things, I'm focusing on a new company that myself and my business partner have launched called Warlords, which is like a um, hand painted advertisement. So we recruit emerging artists to um to upskill them and workshop with them to, to oh get wow a bit more functional on the tools whether it's like super realistic or it's you know lo-fi um flat designs um or even just as, some, as simple as a corporate advertisement you know we upskill artists who want to learn so yep. Um, yeah yeah we've been up and running for about nine months and crushing it Awesome. That sounds, that sounds great. If I, if I wasn't busy enough already, right? <laughs> yeah, adding more things to the repertoire. Um, that, that sounds super cool. Well, why don't we jump over to, we'll, we'll, share, we'll share your desktop here. Let's do that. Um, and we can check that out. Hey, it's you. It's me. <laughs> it's me. It's, it, it be me. Um, it me. Yeah, cool. So um, maybe we'll check out some of your work as well i love this like super on brand like slideshow through photoshop i love it it's so literally cool. you know i thought i really thought about giving you the prestige look and feel about like hey i was a designer therefore i'm gonna give you a really nice put together well considered in design deck but i thought you know what I've been given the branding of photoshop today so i'm gonna do everything in, in lo-fi photoshop so. let's do it 
we'll work with we'll work with what we've got and we're gonna go this way so uh, it me everyone knows that me um, we're gonna showcase a bit of my mural so here is the most recent thing that I've done um, I've spent the last few days at Adobe sorry no I'm, I'm with Adobe now I spent the last few days with <laughs> Dell and Vivid my my brain's fried um, so right, this I got you. I, I got you. So this is from the Vivid. So for people that like um, are not yeah. aware of what Vivid is, um, I'll give you a break from talking because you'll be talking the whole time. So um, yeah. Vivid is like a festival that's been around. I think it's been around almost ten years now, um, where it's like I would say it has a thousand. a thousand years. It's like lighting up, so it lights up Sydney. Um, so there's like projections and murals. I think there was like a drone thing over Sydney Harbour. I missed that, but that's I saw nice. some people sharing on social media. Pretty crazy. Um, so even if you're not from Sydney, there's like, you know, social media is a wash for it. You can check out Vivid um, and what's going on. And they also get artists to do activations, installations and stuff like that. And so you've been asked to create this. So tell us about it. Yeah. So um, I was given a space. I was given the, the brief of creating two self portraits. Um, like anything I do, I like to put a lot of meaning into what I do and I like to give everything I have purpose and create conversations. So part of the conversation was around this was mental health. Um, so the title of the exhibition or title of the body of work is called Now Available in ADHD or Now in ADHD for short. Um, and so basically I just wanted to give this feeling of what it's like to feel ADHD from the artist's perspective. Mm. Basically feeling like overwhelmed, um, overstimulated, overworked, um and just everything encompassing and just you know like obviously very easily distracted and so i think when people walk into this space the the mission was to make people feel like there is just way too much mm. and that was that's what, what what was happening so there's a lot of there's a lot of easter eggs hidden there's a lot of like subtleties and illustrations hidden amongst the mix but it just basically explores my illustration to my collaboration stuff to my graffiti stuff to yeah, it's just taking, basically taking a street artist into this and I'm starting to slowly figure out that I'm kind of, I don't need to stay in one kind of box. I don't need to be the, the designer. I don't need to be a street artist. I can be, uh, I don't need to be an, uh, just an artist. I can be an art wizard. And that's why I'm art just wizard. trying to, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to like, I don't really want to box myself in. So this kind of helps. Um, so basically, yeah, this was the most recent thing I did for Vivid. That was, it was dope. It was such a good experience. Um, that's awesome. Where is my layers? There we go. So, turn this one off. <laughs> um, here's a pre previous one I did for the Dell. So, oh, here we are. I'm already, I'm not thinking straight again. Here's a previous one I did for Slick Agency in, um, in Surrey Hills. Oh, cool. So, a lot of portraits, a lot of composition. A lot of people know me for my portraits and composition work. Mm. Um, if I was to credit myself as an artist, it'd be pop culture. So, it's kind of works hand in hand. Um, one of the largest ones I've did, I've done, did, done did, done did. What, I, what I've done did uh, about two hundred to three hundred square meters of mural. Um, I just decided to paint my best friends, and I collaborated with um, an artist with intellectual disability to replicate her work, which was the postcode in the middle, um, which I thought was dope. And nice. yeah. This is one of the ones you got from behind you. Um, so this was a private commission in, yeah, that's the one. Um, Elstonwick, um, a beautiful couple had commissioned me to paint um, how I looked at their house, which was very Japanese inspired, very pop culture inspired, and wow. just a loving relationship that they had. So I wanted to, yeah, bring this in, bring this together. So this is like an indoor light well, as you can see at yours. So see in your picture. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's um, crazy. The, the biggest difference between I think the the thing that jumps out to me after seeing those is how different they are as spaces. Yeah. Like you got one yeah. that's like in a kind of corporate creative agency, I assume. Um, yeah. This is like someone's house, and it's like a thin three D space with lots of light and mirrors, and then you've got an installation for Vivid. So they like the approaches must be like they're totally different. Yeah, like yeah, they definitely are. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of learning on the job. Put it that way. Yeah, um, yeah, there must be. There must be. The thing that would 
the the thing with each of the spaces is that it's fairly intuitive as well so like whilst i might have a plan going in um a lot of that plan is allowing allowing me to to design on the go mm. so there was think there'll be things that i leave to to go intuitively and there's things that um i need to be mapped out so i'd say maybe a half of this project particularly was mapped out and then the rest was just kind of designed on the go, which was nice because it gave me a chance to actually design for them whilst I got to know them. So, which I think is a big important part. That's cool. Um, not much work to showcase, not much else work to showcase, but um, here is a recent collab. The first collaboration I did with Dell, it was basically a self portrait again, um, just to showcase the laptops and its capabilities and stuff. But I wanted to really push forward this new portrait style that I've got, which was just Kind of bringing in my elements of my graffiti and trying to trying to touch base with my Aboriginal heritage by way of intuitive brush strokes and stuff and mm. yeah. Um, what else have I got? Something I did for Adidas about women in sport. So the Being murals are obviously like it's it's paint. I assume it's like acrylic and paint and things like that, which we'll touch on a little bit. But the one that you showed previously was that Photoshop or Illustrator? That was uh, that was Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I did that all on my laptop. Um, nice. And yeah, I pretty much, I, when I draw, I only really work out of Photoshop. So um, if, unless someone's asked me to work out of a vector file, then I, I don't really bother. Yeah. Um, but Photoshop's a bit more fluent with me. So it allows me to like have pencil sketches and all that jazz. Mm. Yeah, um, cool. yeah, so this is house paint. <laughs> house paint in an Adidas store. This is a slick one still again, like just a different mural. Um, and so now I'm pushing into like larger scale work. So like a lot of my work is quite large scale at the moment, which I like it because it allows me to work quicker. It allows me to get a bit more free up and yeah. So this is one in Bendigo. So why is it, qu- why is it quicker to be larger? Um, I guess cause I don't have like, there's more energy that's put into like painting smaller. So. Right. Um, a lot more concentration, whereas, you know, if I'm drawing an eyeball, it'd probably be like that big on a piece of paper. But if I paint that eyeball on, on a wall, be anywhere from that big to, to like, I don't know, the size of my entire body. And um, it just allows room for error, that error no one will see on the floor. Right, but, right. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, if I can use a bigger application, it will hold more paint. So like if I use a bigger brush, I can go, all right, well, that's one eyeball. That's one stroke. Whereas if I do it small, I can use a certain amount of paint and then it has to be really clean and finessed. And I think as a, as an artist, I think we're all naturally messy. So yeah, um, yeah. this allows me to be messy without that much of a problem, I guess. I don't know. Yep. I just yeah. like, I like painting. Um, I can hear myself a little bit. Maybe you could turn your volume down for me on your side just a little bit because I'm getting a bit of an echo, but let's see if that helps. Um, but um, we, do have a, we do have a question. So um, as we're rolling through today, feel free to throw your questions in like Johanna has. Um, uh, asking, how receptive, receptive are clients to you exploring mental health in your work and how do you start that conversation? Um, good question. Yeah, it's a good question. I generally believe that people buy into me more than they buy into my art right so you know i'm not going to set go out tomorrow and say like i'm the world's best artist because i know i'm not um i'm definitely someone that people buy into because i'm you know very communicative i'm very transparent and honest and i like to tell stories with my work and i think part of my story with my work is the fact that i'm very vocal about my mental health and i'm very communicative with my clients, I'm very, um, very transparent about issues that myself and the people around me have. So, um, I guess people come to me knowing that I guess I'm already talking about mental health. Right. Um, unless they tell me otherwise, I'm not going to talk about it. So unless they tell me otherwise, I'm going to talk about it. But if they say, you know, Hey, let's kind of lean more towards in this way, that's fine with me. But I think as an automatic, I'm, my mission at the at the moment is to to break the um, break this mold that we have that mental health in arts especially is, is a problem. Break the stigma. There we go. Mm. Um, so like I've done a couple articles before, done a couple 
interviews before and even lots of work before and just trying to break the stigma just about how my how my mental health is my superpower and you know things like my ADHD which I explored with Vivid things with my depression which I explore in my murals and my social anxiety and thanks to COVID I've got like a whole bag of them so um, <laughs> um, and endless well to to draw from endless, I can I can dip into anything um but no, I think it's just about being communicative and being transparent from the start. I think if you were to start talking about mental health halfway through your project, it's a bit like, oh, where did that come from? But mm. I'm always talking about things that um, things that are passionate to me. And this is one of the things that's, that is passionate to me. So yeah, yeah, I think that people kind of expect it in a way sometimes. And was that like an intentional thing um, or an organic thing? Like how attached you are like as, as a person, as a brand as an artist you know what I'm saying like you you mentioned that you know they, they approach you as much as they do your work or even more so like is that an intentional thing is that just something that's happened over time and you feel like you have the kind of permission slash authority for lack of a better word to just be like yeah, yeah this is this is this is me this is what I like to do that's your flavor if that's your vibe if you're something that vibes with that let's work on a project together yeah I think all of the above yeah really um yeah, like, you know, I, I always look at, I come from a background in advertising, right? So I always look at things like, you know, what are you more likely to buy? And I'm sorry if this, if it, if this offends Samsung people, but what are you more likely to buy, an iPhone or a Samsung? And the reason why most people link to, uh, link to iPhones is because of the culture. You know, mm. like we all know that iPhones aren't the best phones, but by far they're the easiest to use and they have the culture behind them. Mm. And so I take that approach into into my work, you know, like whilst I might not be the best artist, I'm the most expressive artist. I'm the most, um, right. I'm the hardest working, you know, I can, I can go off and I'm not saying that I actually am, but these are the things that I believe in. I'm the most transparent. I create conversations with my work. Um, I like to be very, I like to be a big button pusher in my work as well. So I think the people kind of drawn towards those things, so they know what they expect. Um, but it's definitely happened organically. It was not my mission to, in the beginning, to be so transparent. Um, it was my mission in the beginning to just get work and get paid and get money. Yeah. But um, I'm kind of left with no other choice than to just to like to be honest, to be transparent, and to be myself. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be anyone else. I'm literally trying to create my own, create my own mold and create my own, my own wave in this, in this industry. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, that that's great. Sense? Yeah, that part absolutely of, makes part sense. Of AD, part of ADHD makes me drift off. So if I don't answer your question, I'll get back to around to it in twenty minutes or something. <laughs> that's no, that's cool. Um, no, it made made sense to me anyway. So there we go. Um, yeah, awesome. Cool. Um, um, so I was gonna. What I was gonna finish on was this last mural that I've just finished for. Um, for Lydia yeah, tell Paul. us about so this, this one. Was, this is the one that I was going to bring everyone through and kind of talk the steps through. Um, this in particular was a very polarizing piece. I um, I came from it. I came at this with the location and with Lydia in mind. And um, growing up in Newtown, I was exposed to the Nelson Mandela mural. It was on King Street. Oh yeah. I used, to go by, I used to go by that weekly, and I just kind of living in Melbourne for the last three years four years three years whenever i just haven't really seen anything that's like that's large scale and that's this you know rebellious for lack of a better word next print yeah. um, <laughs> um so you know being being a, uh, an artist that likes to spark conversations or drive um drive conversations or I like to push buttons in general I knew that this is going to get a massive response um Lydia is someone I believe in firmly and um Aboriginal rights in in Australia is doesn't feel like it's getting any better mm. um and being being a Gadigal artist and being an Aboriginal artist and being and owning a, a First Nations gallery um these are the things I like to put forward and yeah. I think it's time it's time to be for like for black artists to be represented and to be heard and, and for me to do that I need to say something really loudly mm. so yeah, yeah this is something that I was really passionate about and 
it only took me two days to put up and yeah well i did in two days wow um i love yeah. the juxtaposition with the prime video <laughs> yeah i know white, for white girls <laughs> that's what it looks originally, like originally as... originally when i when i pitched the mural was actually um that uh clive the hut whatever his name is the the yellow billboards yeah oh was yeah, that was up there like, yeah that was oh that there. was even more polarizing big, incredible a big job of the hut um, mural a big job of the hut billboard and um yeah she, she was uh Lydia was like yeah that'd be sick that'd be like really funny with me looking at it it's like oh, okay well by the time i'm gonna put this up there it's probably gonna be probably gone, gonna be gone <laughs> it would have been a funny juxtaposition yeah well that well that's great well um yeah, it's super cool. So with this, like when we're talking about approaching the mural, like something like this, is this like a personal project that you spearheaded? Because you've you've um, done some murals of some pretty famous, famous people. So what's your approach to that? You're like, I've got a wall, I got paint, I'm ready to roll. Like, what do we do? Like, how does it how does it all come together that you can create something like this? Um, it came together. This w- this was a personal project and, you know, being a being a commission artist most of the time, um, I don't really get a chance to flaunt things that I want to say. Mm. So the way that I went around this is with, I contacted Lydia and her team and I was asking if I could paint her. Um, I think it's important for um, Aboriginal artists to paint Aboriginal people and sometimes it's done the other way, but that's fine. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I had her permission. Being a believer in what she said, I was like, I needed to make sure that I had her permission to paint her. Um, and she came out and took some photographs and she modeled for the photos. And um, and then I was eating sandwiches at this place like every morning for a while. And I was like, this is actually a sick wall. Can I paint on it? And they were like, yep, we love your work. Uh, you're sick. We love your, we love, the fact that you come here every day and you've seen this and yeah it was just like a really natural yeah right wow. thing i never i never asked permission for walls i normally just started to go paint them or they're given to me um mm. and this one i actually asked permission and i was like look if anything happens to this wall i'll come back and fix it and he's like yeah don't worry you've got exclusive rights this is your wall now if you want to do anything for years to come it's all yours and i was like Dude, this is awesome yeah, wow that's awesome that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, really I've often, response. often wondered, I've often wondered about that. Like, um, I know there was something in Sydney years ago. I can't remember the artist at the moment off the top of my head. And they had like a, it was like a boring walls or something like that. I don't know if you remember that or if it was around. No. But um, but yeah, that whole thing was like, hey, do you have, are you a business? Do you have a boring wall that you want to paint to try to make an archive of it? I don't know what happened to that, but I always thought it was such a great idea because if you have a mm. big wall like this, like, it looks so much better than like a couple of tags and whatever ends up yeah. on there um to have something like this because typically graffiti artists will respect another graffiti artist most of the time right most of the time not- yeah it's a there's so many unwritten laws with graffiti and coming from a graffiti background i know there's so many things that i wouldn't do like cap someone's mural unless unless they had like annoyed me or or have beef with them or something like that but um parkour um <laughs> parkour and um but with when it comes to street art there's a there's a bit of a disconnect with with graffiti artists and street artists and i guess that's someone who's coming from both worlds i'm making small strides at the moment to try and bridge the gaps um but yeah it's a bit of an unspoken thing that if there is crap street art for lack of a better word and obviously it's subjective then um, graffiti writers feel entitled to, to make to claim the wall back or something. I'm not too sure. I don't think yeah. I'd ever do it, but each to their own. It does happen. Um, yeah, it, it happens. It's fine. But I think this is a this is a big polarizing mural. And from my experience, that if anyone wants to go over this, then I think that shows a lot about their character. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, the, the really Nelson Mandela fast. one was like you know not untouched for so long was it Man- i think i think people did was it mandela was it luther king sorry i think it was my fault i actually said mandela i think it was oh, yeah. Martin luther king my was fault okay yeah yeah my yeah. fault but i do rem- i do i do remember it because yeah it was very prominent in 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 newtown and i think that's yeah stayed up. that was up like my whole life i think is it still yeah up? i think i think it's still up yeah i think i forgot to ask the chat yeah 
Let us know, Chad, if you're from Newtown, haven't been there for a while. Um, yeah, and then um, feel free to rip on me, <laughs> blaming Nelson Mandela. Cool. Oh. So you said you said that um, Lydia like posed posed for this. So is that something that you'll do? Like, I mean, we talk about the pop culture approach where, like, you know, you, the internet's your best friend. Like, you know, how many photos yeah. you could Google any pose of a transformer you wanted to if you wanted to throw Optimus yeah. on a wall. Um, but Ooh, so yeah. for this approach, for this approach, you actually like take a camera down you know take some photos of her posing what's the approach there yeah um let's look at my reference folder that i've got over here so um lydia came through and um posed for photo where can i get this up you got the black in front you got the black layer the blacks in front. in front there we go <laughs> <laughs> i use photoshop all the time <laughs> i swear so um i think the nature of my art as well is I'm a compositor. Mm. So I like to, you know, if there's a photo, I need to make it my own. Um, and I think that that is, a, once again, using using the word disconnect, I think that's a massive disconnect between people who paint and pe paint murals and stuff. And I'm also making a bit of a beeline for anyone that paints murals of photographs that don't reference a photographer or, um, or don't paint pictures of no, sorry, don't paint their own pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I think I watched this documentary called um, LA Originals and basically just showed about how this photographer had invented invented that. We'll do it the other way around now. Was it there? Is it they invented oh, yeah. that? And then basically people have just stolen that and reappropriated it. And the, the original guy gets no credit. So I see a lot of mural artists and street artists that paint photographs that aren't theirs and there's no authenticity around their art so they're not truly in my opinion they're not truly an artist they're just a photocopier right so i think that's what i made a mission to to um to actually compose my own work and and still make my own from a photograph so this was lydia's photo it was taken at honeybones um from there she had some requests about you know letting her hair out so i had to I had to find a reference of of her with her hair out and use that as a mock. Um, oh, cool. So that's interesting. So on the day during the shoot, um, you know, she she had her hair up and then she was like, ah, and yeah. you, did you send it back to her? And you're like, yeah, this is the one we think we're going to use. And she's like, actually, she it'd be better if my hair was out. She actually didn't take her hair out. She was just saying it on the spot. And I was like, I guess I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, she was, we were talking about her being represented and how I, how I personally see her and how I wanted the, everyone else to see her. Mm. And we, we kept talking about being represented similar to like Beyonce. And so that's the way I look at her, you know, just being like this, this boss, this queen, and especially being a represent, uh, representative of the black community, I wanted to make sure that she looked as powerful and confident as possible. Um, the photo shoot literally only took less than five minutes and I was, I had it penciled in for about an hour. It was literally just one, one, two, three photos. That was it. Yeah. Um, I guess because yeah. it's a reference, right? Like you just, you're really looking after, the, you know, trying to get the angle right and everything. Like it doesn't matter about like necessarily perfect lighting or perfect yeah. makeup or, you know, all that stuff. It's like, yeah, you're looking for that because you're going to, you're not copying it. You're using it as a reference. Literally. Yeah. I just want to make sure that her like torso isn't, like paper thin or like her arms aren't elongated or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. there's still a big element of tracing in my work, but there's still a bigger level of composing. Mm. So it's, I think that's where my, my art preference lies is, is in composing. So, um, similar to like a musician, you know, like a musician will take samples of work, but they will compose it in a way that makes it their own. Mm. So, um, so yeah, basically I just, um, I needed to Photoshop her hair on. So, and then I just want to make sure that she had hair of her own. Um, I had to put a pelt on her, so I had to find references of pelts that she was wearing. Um, so is the is the pelt a like culturally significant thing from the area, like uh, the um, area she's from? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also a significance of uh, uh, not significance. It's it's a representant of um, hierarchy as well and leadership. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like formal wear. Think of it like formal wear. Right. Yeah, so um, she has this amazing pelt that obviously wasn't wearing in the day, so I need to make sure that I can have 
something of that, um, I guess, to freehand that on later. Mm. So, which is where mm. I brought in my sketches. I started sketching stuff. Nice. Um, so, whilst I had the the um, the idea, I needed to, as you can see here, play with a bit of the pelt. It's um, that, that makes sense. So, like, I need to freehand yeah. a pelt up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because you've got all the other elements you need to bring in. I saw that you had a different version of the hand as well. Hands are obviously notoriously difficult um, to yeah. to draw and illustrate and everything. So you had like a slightly. So yeah, it makes sense. So you've you've got the photo, but you you're still bringing all these other references. Like, yeah, obviously googling photos of her to find what what does that pelt look like? How does it sit on the shoulders? different angles and you know you've got the hair that you're adding so it's really quite interesting like how you use photoshop to composite everything together for yeah. a physical physical mural that you're going that you're going to paint literally yeah it's there's so much more to it other than just photocopying something or or however um but i think if i can bring this up i reckon it's gonna work i reckon i've got another layer on top so um, if I remove this layer, here we go with my Photoshop skills again. I feel like once I've stopped designing, everything's gone out the window. <laughs> <laughs> You've been painting, painting for too long. There we go. Literally. Okay. So I managed to get the sketch on. I think I might have yeah, so they've got an outline on it or something. I don't know. Maybe not. It's a transparency layer. That's really cool. Why are you doing that? Just checking in with with chat. What's up, Gareth and Nick as well? Thanks for sharing. We were just chatting about the the details um, of the MLK. So yeah, it says I have a dream mural. Obviously, we should have known that. That's the one. Um, yep. And it was it was by Andrew Aiken, Julie Pryor, and Tony um, Spanos. So there we Amazing. go. And um, well, apparently it's her me. apparently it's heritage listed. There we go. There we go. Which Let's I did see. not know. So there we go. Thanks, chat. I didn't chat. know that either. Yeah. Well. To everyone who painted that, that has inspired an entire generation of artists. Yeah, like to push buttons. Well, everyone so, knows that mural, right? Like even non-artists like know that mural. If you've ever been around around there, even driving through there, so. you see it. Like it's very prominent. It's polarizing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so from me ruffling out some ideas, um, I have started to, I might, I might remove some sketches now. So remove the pelts and I can remove the hair, I can remove the fist. And so basically you can kind of see that I've mm. traced it, but I've done it so in a way in my style where I highlight her features. And I found that with with women, uh, women port female portraits or, um, or most non-binary portraits, you need to make sure that you only highlighting the right features and not like over highlighting like wrinkles and, and lip folds and cheeks and stuff like that. You want to highlight only things that are important and still defining. So the more and more I reduce the capacity of this layer, I can see some tones and, mm. and everything like that. So yeah. And now you can see we have a bit of a, um, sketch going on. Um, so obviously at this point I had the wall in mind and I wanted to make sure that all my proportions were still, still relevant. So this was the wall previously, um, covered in graph, um, starting to get destroyed and, and obviously this big high area at the top, which I just felt was unutilized and being, um, I guess just being a designer at heart, I want to make sure that everything was being utilized. So I paid for his lift out my pocket just to make sure I got the tops and um, just carry a scissor lift, uh, carry a scissor lift around. It's what I do. It's what I do. They call me the cherry picker. <laughs> That's my LinkedIn profile name now, the cherry picker. Um, so when when you're planning for a mural, I think you need to take a lot of other things into account. You know, like it's more than just how does it look on the wall but how does it sit and interact with everything along with it how does it uh, how does the wall itself act as a canvas how are people going to look at it how high does things sit i think those are things you start to get into once you have a bit more experience but in this regard 
I just kind of created my own canvas and I knew the kind of areas I need to avoid. Um, I knew the eye line was around this little green box there. Is that what the green box is for? The green box is actually electricity box, but it's um yeah, so you about, know you it's about eye level. It's yeah. just below eye level. Oh no, yeah. I painted over it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are you meant to do that? You did it. Anyway. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. I don't know. I'd rather ask permission. If, I'd, rather, I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission most of the time. So yeah. if I cop a fine, then it wasn't me. Um, anyway, <laughs> we'll delete this video. I mean, there's no evidence you didn't do it. Error. Error. <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, so you've just kind of like just basically like done like a like kind of sketch out of the area. Yeah, the areas to avoid. I assume that line that's coming across is power going to the the lighting on the advertising or something like that. Yep. But yep. also, I knew that that point was you would you would need to get a massive ladder to go above that as well. So. Right. Part of painting a mural for a politician is that sometimes it's not always going to be seen as a personal project and it's not always going to be seen as a cultural project. Um, and unfortunately, as we spoke about before, some graffiti artists and some pe some angry people as well, they don't even have to be graffiti artists. It could be just like salty old people that look like Jimmy Savile that come along and paint the mural and then, and that's what, it, that's what happens. And then, so I wanted to make sure that this green line was the point of, um, the point beyond effort. Oh, so, okay. Uh, Hang on, I did a pe the penny just dropped then for me. So, because people can't can't reach it unless they come out with equipment, you want to make sure that the really important parts are out of reach. So they'd have to be correct. They'd have to go yeah. to Bunnings and get a ladder yeah. and get down. Yeah. By the time they do that, maybe maybe they calm down and their anger isn't. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. Better. So this is probably. I also kind of thought of this point is like. If people were throwing paint on it, they're going to have to throw either a lot of paint or they're going to have to come at it from the angle of like using it, using tools to, to splatter paint on it. Yeah. And so I thought that this was a nice point where I can go, yeah, they're going to have to put in a lot of effort to get above this point. Mm. So that's, that's smart. the way I, I like that. Is that, <laughs> is that learning from like, from, from previous experience? You're like, well, you just know that people can't reach that or is, is it just something you learn or something that from what I've from what I've seen yeah I mean I've, I'm pretty lucky I've never really had um, any of my murals capped I think there was maybe one along the road somewhere but mm. I'm pretty I'm pretty fortunate with that regard I think because people see that I have a graffiti influence into my style so I think that they're like he's one of us <laughs> yeah yeah one of us <laughs> um, that makes sense. Maybe. Like someone coming from like a different field and coming and coming across and just starting to paint over graffiti artist wall with no history of graffiti, it would make you know make sense. It's like not part of the street. You didn't you didn't grow up on these streets, so I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. I think like as well. I've seen I've seen um, I'm just gonna say politically charged murals for lack of a better term. I've seen politically charged murals get um, paint thrown at it and like people with roller poles like mm. plaster mm -hmm. over it. Um, with paint, um, I've seen people destroy murals before, and they have to put in a lot of effort. So, yeah. for me, knowing that it can happen was enough for me to go like, all right, well, this is a base for me to at least kind of put the important stuff above here. Yep. So, makes sense, smart, and I that's like why. Um, so that actually brings me to my next point. I wanted to make sure Lydia's face was above that point. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Kind of learning, but also, just, I guess, just thinking intelligently. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, as we said, like, just it, it's, there's so much more to it. Um, the kind yeah. of doing it, doing something digitally where you, you don't have to think about the environment or the the other things on the wall, or you know, someone throwing paint at stuff. And yeah, there's so many extra factors in there, like um, so many creating a mural. Oh, yeah. Stuff you just don't even think about either, but I don't know, maybe we can talk about that next session. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think from from an illustration standpoint and like a design standpoint, I wanted to make sure that I feel that every, every space was considered as well. And I guess even on that note was why I brought in this part as well, which was the treaty um, as a conversationalist piece, but also just to kind of showcase the typography skills that are involved in graffiti. Right. So the message is the message alone is, is you know if you were to post rationalize it is is grounded, but 
the important stuff is still above your eyes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that it's been so grounded is is obviously a better better chance for people to you know, interact with the mural and interact with like taking pictures of it and stuff and sharing it. So it becomes more than just a portrait on a wall. I mean, because it starts to become like larger scale and stuff. So yeah. um, as a reminder of what it kind of looked like and felt like, that's kind of it for scale. Yeah, so, wow. Um, yeah, you need you need a um, Jesse there for scale for sure. You like, do. And this How is many- a lift because those things are those things are really big. Yeah, they're massive. Um, how many Jessies does it take to climb to the top? Um, <laughs> One with a scissor from, lift in his pocket. <laughs> literally. The cherry picker. But yeah, from like across the road, I guess you can kind of see that like how much of the wall it takes up and how it's like a, it's a fairly considered piece and and all that. Um, if you don't mind the, top, the, the part in the top right, just I couldn't reach there with my scissor lift. <laughs> Wow, it's so high that above the advertising couldn't reach up there like any higher. Literally, yeah. Like I was, um, I'll try. I'll draw a box to where, where my, um, where my cherry picker could go. But essentially, it wasn't that big. I had to like stand on top of it quite illegally, and like, I think my hand was as far. My hand could only reach, I think here-ish. Wait, that's not soft enough. The dark hardness. Put up. There we go. So I could only reach about here. Right. Um, hence why like, I was like standing on top of this, I was standing on top of the lift, but I think the lift itself stopped here. Right, that's pretty dodgy. So I, <laughs> yeah, so I was actually standing on top of the lift in a very illegal way, but yeah, don't tell, don't tell the council. Hopefully, can, hopefully no one from the council is watching this. <laughs> we'll shadow ban them. Um, yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so do you have so how how do you approach this? Like, do you just I'm looking at behind there. It looks like you've just you're just painting over the top of the graffiti underneath. Do you have to like prime the whole thing? Like, what's um, what's the situation there? Generally speaking, yeah, you probably would. Um, but when you're paying for a cherry picker yourself, I think you just want to avoid as much work as you can because yeah. you pay by the day. So. Um, I mean, in normal, normally speaking, yeah, I think I'd say that you'd need to roll every wall first. Um, try to think if I've seen if I've got any other murals here that I've that I've rolled previously. I guess similar to this one as well. Like, I rolled that entirely green before I started. Um, same with this one as well. I rolled the background white just to make sure I had a nice canvas. And sometimes the paint will play with you as well because you need to roll over certain types of bases or or any of that. Um, yeah, same with this mural for Dylan. I had to paint this entirely white because most of the bases other than black were white bases. So um, yeah, just another way of saying this is hard to paint over with white or this is another hard way to paint over with black. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, generally speaking, a lot of the times you'll want to prep your base like you would a canvas and um, give yourself the right tools and the right brushes. There's so many like different brushes that I don't tell you about trying to get into and different types of paints that, that I had to learn the hard way. Um, spray paint and house paint together sometimes don't mix. Right. Um, things about weather conditions affecting your paint, which I don't tell you about either. Yeah, so do you have to make sure it's not raining for two days to do a two-day mural? Like, if it if it's a little bit rainy, is it is it like, oh, no, what are we going to do? You can't, like, throw a tarp over it. So, like, are you just on your weather app constantly, especially being in Melbourne? Yeah, BOM. Yeah, B-O-M. Um, yeah. Bureau of Meteor- Meteorology kind of gives me some pretty up-to-date. It's like your most um, used yeah. app on your phone. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's just literally, on the home page because you're like, yeah. yeah. Literally. Well, fun fact, I was actually painting in the rain. So the beautiful thing about spray cans is that it dries about a hundred times quicker than house paint. So spray paint will typically dry in about 30 seconds. Oh, right. Um, So I was painting in the rain just to make sure that it didn't. um, So I did the entire outline in, in, in spray paint just to make sure I just got all the, all the heavy stuff down the day before and yeah, pretty much all of the the face and the, the outline is done in spray paint just to make sure. Um, 
which is very difficult when you're painting um, someone's mobs upside down and spray paint on a rainy day. Right. Which you'll see in high definition, maybe not as high as I wanted it to. Yeah, I don't know. Painting over here. Yeah, nice. Either way. We um, just just a reminder for chat as well and yourself, we have about like nine minutes left or something now. So if you have any questions while we're rolling along, let us know while we've uh, while we're still live. Yeah, no doubt. Do it, do it, do it. Ask away. Um, so I think when it comes time to like put everything in, this was how the mural kind of started to form together. Yeah. So this um, is a digital. This is a digital file over the top, right? So this is something you've sketched, you've done in Photoshop. I shouldn't say sketch, yep. it's more detailed than that, but um, yeah. and it's really Which interesting, is, the blotching that you've done. I don't know if blotching is the right word, but like the layering of color, like it's, they're really, mm. it's like big, bold kind of thing. Is that, yeah. Like, what's, what's the idea behind that? Like, so the idea was I'm trying to carve my own position in street art, right? I'm trying to yeah. have something unique that I can do and I'm trying to paint and use my experience for, to, to take me forward. So the reason why I've started doing this block color stuff, and I'm still trying to find a good name for it as well, so I might even stick with block color, um, is that with my graffiti background, a lot of the times that our tags are just kind of left to, I don't know why this is scrolling like it's in The Simpsons. <laughs> um, um, a lot of the time my color is just kind of blocked in just like so when graffiti tags get buffed they just get buffed with a really crappy roller so i wanted to have that same approach where it's like i don't have oh, to right, lean on, yeah. i don't have to lean on fine crisp sharp lines and then i bring that into my sketches and it looks it looks the same as a mural so i'm trying to keep things quite consistent but that was my that's my um my rationale for why i have started doing this um this tonal style is because i wanted to have that that buffing effect of like when people cover tags. Mm. Um, but equally, it just leans into a bit of that, that rock and roll personality that I'm starting to kind of have with my work of like not coloring inside the lines and I guess just being a bit more forgiving and like mm. with my work because due to my personality, I don't really color between the lines in society myself. So yeah, we talked about I... that, like putting yourself in the work in, in inside the inside the work. So it makes sense. It could... Bit, yeah, you know, a bit, bit loose and, um, you know, a bit fun. Um, that's it, yeah. And that's why I've gotten some drips here as well. And like, yeah, just allow, I allow myself to be intuitive on the wall. Sometimes, sometimes you just can't plan for things. And that was actually part of the rain as well. The rain kind of did a lot of that. This made it quite difficult yeah. to keep the paint from dripping. So, yeah. Roll with um, it. That's it, yeah. Well, um, we do we do have a question um, so about digital murals. I don't know how many digital murals you do, um, but the question is, what pixel size would you recommend for creating a digital mural in Photoshop? Thanks and great work um, from Music Wave. Um, my, my guess would be if it's going to be digital always, just 72 DPI or 150, but what would you say? Mm, I'd probably say the same unless, you print, unless you're printing it. Yeah. Um, I've never really had to create a digital mural, to be honest. Um, I think people come to me for the tangible stuff um yep. but if i was yeah i'd probably just get the dimensions right give it enough space for me to to mock up and put on a, a wall i guess like a, a psd mock-up something like that um yeah but i'd probably just stay if it's not being printed just stick between the right specs like 72 or 150 at highest yeah um but yeah i don't know i've never really had to create many di digital murals out there i didn't know there was much of a request for it so i'm stoked that there is we've had some we've had some artists on here like particularly during like like in different stages of lockdown and stuff like that where they haven't been able mm. to you know people haven't been able to get out and um and and paint and all that sort of thing so i think it was a bit yeah. of a resurgence during that time um but um so we saw been seeing a lot more of it we have been here on adobe live but um sick yeah i saw i saw one of them like tuned in for one of them it looked really cool yeah lots of fun um Another question, um, what do you prefer, a sketchbook or whatever loose piece of paper you can find? Oh, you know what? Like, I feel like we're, that's a debate forever. Yeah. Um, as much as I try and stay organized and stay on top of myself with um, with a sketchbook or something like that, I end up just misplacing it or losing it anyway. Um, so my answer for that is somewhere in between. Um, 
like either my iPad or Photoshop. Um, Photoshop's now on the iPad anyway, so um, you know, I think having having the ability to have like a digital sketchbook is always a good thing. I must have like a thousand drawings saved, which will probably never see the light of day. Right. Unless I make a book, a book will be fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know, maybe a loose bit of paper. I think it's like my graffiti instincts is like, oh, I'm just going to pick up and draw whatever I want or whatever I find in the meantime. Mm. So, um, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a forever question, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, that's it, right? And sometimes you sometimes you switch and change. You might do everything digitally because it's so convenient and you can kind of quickly yeah. move it into Photoshop and then later you might be like, ah, I really feel like the, I want to sit in a cafe. I don't want to have to charge anything or take anything and just want to draw some stuff or... The beautiful transition of this digital world is the fact that now every time I pick up a piece of paper and try and draw on it, I'm always trying to zoom in or I'm trying <laughs> to like undo, undo. Pinch and zoom. Um, so, yeah, my, I mean, I, my kid does that with idea. screens that aren't interactive <laughs> like the TV, trying to swipe it across <laughs> and stuff and that's crazy. Um, but yeah, so I, I relate. Or like I'm um, trying to command Z something and you're like, oh yeah, can't do that. Um, Literally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, we have one more question I, I, that we might use to take it out. Sorry, I cut you off. No, how dare you? All right, this is my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just mute myself no, I, and turn my camera off. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, yeah. No, I was going to say I try to command Z everything in life, but you know, nothing happens. So I'm far, here now. successfully. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I'm a failure. <laughs> maybe one day. Um, question was: uh, What's one thing you wish you knew before starting to paint murals? hard um stretch yeah literally do physio i'm so i'm like it's so much more physically demanding than anyone would think mm. honestly like the amount of yoga and pilates i've had to take up is nuts um and you put your body under stress as well like last december i tore my knee just out of stress just yeah, like right, it was yeah. just tired and my body's just physically tired all the time so like yeah, maybe that's a maybe that's a pretty good answer. Is this it's physically demanding, so I guess prepare. You know, like no one would ever guess, or at least me when I started painting full time. I think like what year is it? I started painting full time like five years ago. Um, that I'm like always like this now. Like that's my entire position. Um, right. You know, carrying the paint up here and then carrying a heavy paint bucket in this hand, so I'm like this all the time. And so my physio is like, oh, you need to work your lats. You need to like strengthen your lats and your and your um your hamstrings for when you climb ladders all the time. I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. I'm I'm an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, awesome. Um, yeah, no, I think that honestly, and the only thing I wish I knew is just like network from the beginning. Just network and meet everyone, and just be like, don't be entitled. Just be kind. Like yeah. the amount of entitled people I've seen try and come through that just expect things to get given to them. Uh, less fortunate the ones that just want to be friends with everyone and that's it just um just be kind and just be nice and network and and just be hungry you know like that's something that was never i never really had the engagement for was just networking yeah but i was always hungry so yeah no i think that's i think that's great advice and it works across um other industries as well um well let's take let's let's uh end it there guys thank you uh everyone that joined us um for this live stream we'll be back on thursday um, for part two of this series. Um, is that Ace behind us or is that Fury? It's, it's Fury. That's Fury. He's dreaming. He's dreaming. He's dreaming about murals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, great. Thanks again. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Jesse. Um, we will see you on Thursday for part two. Where we uh, show you how to do a mural. We'll show you how to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you then uh, on the next episode of Adobe Live. Bye, everyone.